In this video, I want to talk about some common things that pool owners seem to just consistently get wrong. And I'm not, you know, making fun of anybody here or anything. It's just after 30 plus years in the industry, I've noticed certain things that pool owners tend to make incorrect assumptions about. And I thought this might be a fun little video. So we'll start off with an easy one, which is the volume of your swimming pool. And I know as a pool guy, you know, based on rough sizes, I have a pretty good idea how many gallons are in your swimming pool when I'm talking to you. And a lot of the time somebody will say to me like, oh, I've got a 20 by 40 swimming pool. It's 50,000 gallons. And I'm thinking to myself, well, unless it's 20 feet deep, it's probably not 50,000 gallons, it's probably 30,000 gallons. And it's just really common for pool owners to overshoot in terms of the the amount of volume in the pool and where you can really learn this is in your water chemistry so like when you do a water chemistry correction uh, let's say you need to increase the free chlorine by two parts per million so you read the instructions and you see how much you're supposed to add and you add that amount but you don't get two parts per million more you only get one or one and a half this might indicate that the pool is bigger than you think it is but more commonly you'll add in that proper amount of chlorine and you'll get three parts per million or two and a half instead of two that it's a little thing but that you know the the incorrect adjustment of your water chemistry kind of is your signal that you have uh, incorrectly estimated the volume of your swimming pool and swimming pool technicians this is something that they get very proficient with because they deal with hundreds and hundreds of swimming pools it doesn't really matter what the exact volume of your pool is it truly does not if you're plus or minus 5%, even plus or minus 10%. That's pretty good. It's going to get you close enough with your water chemistry adjustments that you're going to be in the right range and you can make, you know, further corrections or adjustments from there. And especially the longer you own the pool, the better you're going to get at doing that. But in general, many swimming pool owners incorrectly estimate the volume of their pool as being larger than it actually is. And so that brings me to my second point. This is probably like one of the biggest offenders on the list. And it's in regards to how deep your swimming pool is. So if you have a residential swimming pool, it's not a commercial pool, it's probably not 12 feet deep. It's really, really common to hear pool owners say, oh, I've got a 12 foot deep pool, 14 foot deep pool. Like they're out there. They're out there for sure. Usually really old concrete pools. Those are the ones that I would expect to see with those kinds of depths. The average residential in-ground pool is more like eight to nine feet, rarely more than nine. If you have a vinyl liner pool, so often people with a vinyl liner pool, you see the pool empty and you're thinking, oh, this pool's like 12 feet deep, 10 feet deep. It could be, but it's highly unlikely. You know, if you were to stand on the deep end of the floor of your pool and put your hand over your head, like are your fingers touching air? Because that's probably closer to the average depth of a residential vinyl liner swimming pool. So again, those 12 foot, 14 foot deep pools are out there. Even 10 feet is very, very rare for a residential pool. So again, this is one of those things where you see it empty. And I know this is exactly where this comes from. When you see a swimming pool empty, and you don't normally, right? Normally you're, you've lived in your house for years. You never see your pool empty. When you're standing on the pool deck and you're looking at an empty pool, maybe with some workers working around down there, it looks crazy deep. And I'm certain that that's where this comes from, where people see how deep it is. They're like, oh, wow, it's like 12 feet deep down there. It probably isn't. So here's something that a lot of pool owners get wrong. So you hire me, I'm your pool guy. And I show up every week or maybe a couple times a week and I backwash your sand filter and I clean out the pump strainer basket and I adjust your chemicals, right? That's my job as your regular pool guy. So today, when I went to backwash your filter, the handle on your filter broke and you're like, well, it was working fine before you touched it. So you have to replace it. And if you're talking to somebody who lacks confidence or somebody who's inexperienced, they might very well just go ahead and do that for you as, a, as opposed to having the confrontation. There's approximately a 0% chance that I'm going to pay for your broken sand filter. First of all, of course it broke when I touched it. I'm the only person that touches it. It will definitely break at some point every piece of pool equipment will. And if I'm the only person who interacts with it, then it's all but guaranteed it's going to break with my fingerprints on it. But that's not my fault. Your pool equipment's old. It broke. Things break. It needs to be replaced. My sand filter works good. It's your sand filter that's broken. You need to buy a new one. 
or just replace the broken part as the case may be. It's like when you go to a mechanic and if I have like a really old rust bucket of a car and I'm like, hey, fix my exhaust and he breaks a bunch of, you know, bolts off because they're C's, they're never coming out of there. So he has to do a lot of grinding and drilling and tapping and this and that and he's going to charge me for that because it's my crappy rust bucket of a car. It's not his fault that you can't get those bolts out. It's not my fault that your 20, 20 year old pool filter had the filter handle snap off or any other thing like that when you're interacting with pool equipment. Like we try to be careful. I, like I can't speak for every pool professional out there, but I, a lot of us, because we do this professionally, we don't want problems. We just want to get in and get out and go about the rest of our day. And when something breaks, I get it. It's unfortunate. Nobody likes to pay for that. Everything for pools is expensive. But the reality is, is that the onus of responsibility is on you. It is your swimming pool. It's your older equipment that's broken. And like, unless there's been some sort of thing where I've just, you know, been irresponsible or careless with whatever I was doing, like I was carrying a ladder and I turned around and broke the bay window of your home with my ladder. Well, that's not, that's not your fault. That's my fault for being careless with that ladder. The ladder didn't have to hit the window. You know, I could have been more careful. So it, I did have to turn the filter handle to backwash the filter. And if the filter handle was old, it was, I mean, it was going to break whoever turned it next. It just so happened that I was the person to do that. So that's the thing that pool owners often get wrong. You think, hey, you're the last person that touched it. Everything was working fine before you got here. So you fix it. And it it really doesn't work like that. You know, pool equipment's going to break. And if you're the only person that touches it, then of course it broke after you touched it. Okay, here's something that pool owners get wrong all the time. My pool water looks good. So everything's good, right? Not really. Like, so first of all, just ranging from like, it could be slightly incorrect. The water could be slightly out of balance, still looks pretty good. It's not really a problem with if you went swimming. There's not a, like any imminent damage happening to your pool equipment. Or it could be the pool's like really badly out of balance, like maybe terribly out of balance. The saturation index could be in the acidic state or the scaling state, or your pH could just be crazy low, like a pH of five, like a cup of black coffee. That's possible. That water will still look clean and clear or can look clean and clear. And just because it does, does not mean that it's safe to swim in and does not mean that you're, you know, potentially not causing damage to your pool equipment. That kind of brings me to my next point, which is, for example, a pool heater, which has failed early. What the heck? This pool heater was expensive and now it's failed early. And the technician came from the manufacturers and they took it all apart and they took a bunch of pictures and they said, this is your fault. You didn't maintain the water chemistry in this pool properly. And you're thinking, what are you talking about? My pool always looks great. I always maintain my water chemistry. But what does that really mean, right? Is your pool really balanced? A lot of people think, yeah, the water looks good, so everything's good. But that's not how it works because it could be minorly out of balance or it could be majorly out of balance. So, for example, I mentioned saturation index. If you had a problem with your water balance where you were not in the neutral state, you were in either the acidic state or the scaling state for an extended period of time, this would not be reflected with the quality of how your water looks, but it would definitely affect the longevity of the metals of the internals of your heater. Further, upon inspection, you would be able to see as clear as day that there's chemical damage to the internals of this heater. And so you thought everything was good because the water looked good. But there are different levels to water balancing. Like, is your free chlorine good and your pH is in the right range? Like, some people would say, oh, that pool is balanced. Most pool owners don't take the time to calculate saturation index. And a lot of pool owners have never even heard of saturation index before. But it would be a good idea if you got familiar with it. Because that's the true measure of whether this water is balanced or not. There's a host of individual parameters that we need to maintain for water to be comfortable and safe in a swimming pool. But this saturation index thing relates directly to the long-term damage potential of the water in relation to swimming pool surfaces and mortar surfaces and metals like stainless steel or pool heaters, pool pumps, the internals of, ter internals of your pool filter. All of these things are going to be affected by saturation index. So just looking at your water and seeing something that's relatively clear and having a handle on the pH and the sanitizer level, it's not enough. You should endeavor to learn about saturation index, calculate the saturation index for your swimming pool to determine whether you are in the neutral state or not. Neutral state's what you're aiming for. Anything outside of that, you could be 
uh, potentially experiencing early failure of expensive swimming pool components. What's something else that pool owners often get wrong? Well, maybe this one only applies to the minority versus the majority, but when you have a problem with your water chemistry, something's wrong, the pool looks bad, maybe the water turned green. I cannot tell you how often people come back to me and say, yeah, so we're just looking for something else and we're going to buy like a mineral system or an alternative to chlorine or something. And I'm like, wait, what? why would you do that? You didn't do the basic, the most entry level of swimming pool chemistry maintenance. You failed to be able to, you know, give the pool chlorine, monitor your pH, add cyanuric acid, this basic stuff, which is actually pretty easy to accomplish clear water in a swimming pool if you just follow the steps. Looking at an alternative to chlorine is like a 10x difficulty increase versus basic pool care, which is bit more or less comes down to some liquid chlorine or bleach, you know, using like baking soda to increase your pH, using muriatic acid to lower your pH, setting your cyanuric acid in the 30 to 50 range, and keeping your combined chlorine at zero. If you're doing all that, then your pool water looks great. If you have a problem with your water chemistry, I would encourage you to not think, well, there must be something wrong with this approach. Let's find a different approach. I would instead encourage you to go back to the fundamentals of swimming pool water chemistry. I'll put a link in the description to my swimming pool 10-minute uh, chemistry crash course where I teach you what you need to know in the order you need to know it in. There's basically like a half dozen parameters that you need to know and monitor and test the water for and then make corrections to when they're not in the right range. That's pretty much it. And if you were to try to find an alternative to this fundamental approach of water chemistry and water care, no matter what you do, it's going to be a lot harder, not easier. Like you're looking for easier and instead you're actually going to make it a lot harder. You're going to make it way more difficult to keep that water safe, to keep the water clear, more likelihood that you run into abstract problems that are uncommon and require specialists and things like that. Like just going with traditional water chemistry care is actually like the easiest way to do things. And it's one of these situations where there's so much information available on traditional water chemistry and water care that it should make it easy for you to get the information that you're looking for. Whereas again, as soon as you start looking outside these mainstream things and looking to alternatives to chemical sanitizer like chlorine, it gets a lot harder, a lot more complicated, more opportunities for problems arise, and a lot of pool owners don't realize that. So if you're having a problem with your water chemistry, don't look to alternatives, go back to the fundamentals. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.